Hey guys, welcome back to my second episode. This episode is going to be a long, big episode because we're doing quite a bit of stuff to the car. What we're looking at doing this episode is a lot of external mods. So we're going to be fitting a drift wing to make it look good. We're going to be doing drift strobes in the front. And we're also going to upgrade the brakes to 330i brakes. The other things we're also looking at doing is interior wise, we're going to be fitting a custom gauge cluster. So a nice big taco, um, oil pressure, water temp gauge, things like that just to make it easier on us when we're racing it. And then finally we're going to start it and go for a bit of a drive and test out the engine and gearbox, make sure she's running right. So there's a fair bit to squeeze into this episode, so I'm not going to drag on too long, we'll get started on it. So we're placing the spoiler where we want it roughly and we're going to use a vivid to mark out where the mounts are going to sit. We'll then remove the spoiler and we're going to drill out the holes. And now we've got the holes made, we can chuck the mounts back on and then eventually the spoiler back on top as well. Next up was fitting the strobe light kit. First I removed the headlights, then I got the original strobe light kit that came from eBay and crimped some terminals on the end so they'd fit in the original bulb holders. I did attempt to go and fit some Charmeleon kind of coloured film over the front of the headlights but being eBay quality it just wasn't any good so that got pulled off in the end. So we're doing the 330i brake upgrade currently. Remember this was a 318 shell. So we've got the 330 rotors here and the 330 calipers. So today we'll be jacking it up, pulling the wheel off and then fitting the new brakes and um, rotors on both sides. And as per usual, my jack's letting me down again, so I've got a new one on order, but unfortunately due to the Rona, it's going to be a little bit delayed. It was about this time that I realised that I don't actually have any brake pads for the calipers and they had been left somewhere else so I had to make a slight detour. Alright right, guys so unfortunately I have left the brake pads out of the calipers. During the process of painting them I've obviously forgotten to bring them home which isn't ideal. So I'm just going to pop round to a friend's and pick them up, um, obviously due to lockdown, uh, it's part of my supermarket trip that I'm doing today. Um, so we'll go grab them and do a quick trip to the supermarket with the old doggo and um, we'll get back into it. With the pads we can now finally get back to fitting both calipers on both sides and finally bleeding the brakes. 
for anyone wanting to do the big brake upgrade from the 330i onto your E46, they're a direct bolt on, you just need the brake caliper and the rotor. The rotors and pads on this one weren't great, so we will be replacing them eventually, but for now they'll do the trick. And as per Murphy's Law, we're out of brake fluid. Hey guys, so unfortunately we actually ran out of brake fluid, so now I'm going to have to do another trip down to get some brake fluid. Look at your face. It's not a camera face. So we're going to pop down to the petrol station and just grab some um, more brake fluid so we can bleed these brakes. And hopefully um, that'll be the brakes all sorted for today. Right, so we got our brake fluid from good old Caltex up the road. She's only up the road from me about 500 meters, so that's actually not too bad if you need bits and pieces, all the basics at least. So we can get back to these brakes and get them all hopefully done before it gets too dark. He's got a tendency to eat bulk, so you better watch what he's eating. He took some of the wheel nuts last time I was taking the wheels off and it's just a pain to have to go around looking for the things. Right, so onto gauge cluster and then we're finally on to running the engine up. So to make this gauge cluster I effectively took the original dash out of the car and I chopped off the front plastic using a Dremel tool as well as the black surround I guess that sits around the gauges in there. Um, I had to make a custom aluminium filler to uh, hold the gauges um, using a hole saw and it was just pretty much a bit of trial and error to get it to fit. Once I got it to fit I then sealed the unit in there after I'd carbon wrapped it and then fitted the gauges and she was pretty much done. So we've got this custom set up here, we've got the rev counter in the middle with a shift light, we've also got water temp gauge on the side, oil pressure on the other side and a red and a yellow, one for rev limiter and one for low oil pressure so we can keep an eye on it. So I'll give you a bit of a close up now of what we've done. We are, we are dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust Search but you stay lost Right guys, so today we're going to be fitting the front bumper back onto the car. Headlights. And that will be the front all sorted. And we should be able to take it for a drive then around the block and see what it runs like. Right guys, so we've finished assembling the front bumper. That's all on there. As you can see, I've done the bolts up down in there, and down in there. Now, I thought I would just run you through the M50 engine while we're here. So, as you can see, the exhaust manifolds here literally are just dumping right there. And the back one you might be able to see is just right there. 
So it's literally dumping straight onto the ground. So once we get this turbo manifold, that'll come up here and stick up like this. And we should be able to mount a turbo up in here. Right guys, time to start this thing up and we'll see what she runs like, eh? Now the running issue we had with the idling really weird, um, here's your Vanos, and down in here is actually the connector I disconnected, so there's a little wire, you can probably just see it running down there, and you can see the plug disconnected if I pop to it maybe, this one down here, so there's a little connector there, and when I disconnected that all of a sudden it ran a lot better, so obviously our Vanos um, seals and our piston are gone, um, as I say whether we delete that or whether we fix it is um, something I'll have to sort later on. Right, so I've disconnected the Vanos connector and I've started it up and it seems to be idling a lot smoother so that's definitely what our issue was, like I mentioned before, it even responds a lot better to revs now so I think it's pretty much ready to take it for a bit of a spin and make sure the gearbox is all good and the rest of it. Hi guys, right, so we've just arrived in Mexico. We're gonna um, run the engine up here, go for a test drive and see what it goes like. And then we'll be shipping the car back. Um, so yeah, hopefully we don't have any issues with it and she runs all good. Um, Hey guys, so that went pretty good, didn't seem to have any hiccups or anything like that on acceleration which is what we're after. So it's definitely an issue with that Vanos solenoid unfortunately and we're going to have to deal with that at a later date but for now I'm pretty happy with the engine. I still would like to do some servicing so this thing hasn't had an oil change since I fitted the motor. So we're going to get some um, oil and a filter and a few other bits and pieces and just do general servicing um, before we stick this turbo kit on it. So. But other than that, pretty happy. Gearbox seems to work alright. The brakes are a little bit funny. Um, they do work and it has cleaned those rotors up a fair bit. But I think I'll probably bleed the brakes again. And as I say, it uses the clutch line as well for... Um, the, sorry, it uses the brake reservoir as part of the clutch line. So we're going to have to probably bleed the clutch as well. It's a little bit funny, it's a little bit spongy. So we'll sort that out and we'll sort the brakes out. And then we should be good to turbo it. So the bits are on their way. I don't know how long it'll take to get here from China. But it gives us plenty of time to get the rest of the car ready. So, yeah. And that wraps up this episode. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you like the content, can you please make sure you like, share and subscribe and keep up to date with the build. Next episode, we're going to be locking the diff and a few other bits and pieces, so stay tuned for that.